Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden Night. Thank you, coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today, we've got an AFC East matchup between the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. Here's Steven Goskowski now to kick this one off. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. Now to return it, here's Kenyon Drake. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Miami's offense taking the field. Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback, and the question is, will he be the quarterback of the future in Miami? Adam Gase, of course, let go. Will a new coach want a new guy under center? Not just a new coach, but how about the administration of the Miami Dolphins? They have a brand new general manager in place. He may very well want to check out the market for Ryan Tannehill and see if there's a deal to be made while they find their new quarterback for the future. Only 11 games played this year for Ryan Tannehill. 17 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and they missed the playoffs again. On first down, it's Tannehill. And complete. This is Albert Wilson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now a play fake here on first down. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's a right versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. So much for coming out throwing as it leads to an early second down and long. Here's the first carry for Kenyon Drake. And yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Dante Hightower on the stop. This offense has a few playmakers. If they're going to go downfield, they often look the way of stills. He loves to run the deep routes, loves to get downfield and make the big catches, and he does it with flair. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Let's go. Lady. Go, go. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Back deep for New England, Julian Edelman. if we didn't point out what else was happening Super Bowl weekend, the Madden 19 Club Championship, second major this season, two more to follow, and our winner, Pauvin, representing the Oakland Raiders. He took down the Vikings, and your favorite, Charles, Ivy Strafen. He had to reach for the Ivy Profen after a 38-24 <laughs> beatdown in the final. Well, you know if he was representing the Oakland Raiders, the Vikings went down, and they went down hard. That's how the Raiders do it. How about Pauvin, though, wins 100000 for his efforts, also won Super Bowl tickets for the next day, unselfishly gave them to his father and his brother. How about that? That's pretty cool. Congratulations, Pauvin. Way to go. And on the stop defensively, Raekwon McMillan. There was only one man who scored a touchdown in Super Bowl 53, and, of course, it was that man we just saw, Sony Michelle. How about him turning it on in the postseason of his rookie year because 
in the 16 game regular season he didn't play in all 16 now he did have six touchdowns which is pretty darn good but he added six more touchdown runs in the Patriots three playoff wins that's pretty significant as well and he takes this just about a yard shy of the 20. Brady to his old reliable Edelman and the Patriots have a first down. Edelman, the seventh wide receiver to be named Super Bowl MVP. Ten catches, 141 yards in that game, Charles. And just think, if Julian Edelman had followed his heart initially, he would have gone to Canada to play quarterback, which is what he played at Kent State. But he wanted to play in the NFL, willing to make the change to receiver. And how well has that paid off for not just him, but the New England Patriots? Paid off really well, and he can hide that Super Bowl MVP trophy right in that beard. <laughs> So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Now a first down carry. It's Michelle. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On play action, it's Brady. Forced out to his left. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. Well, the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage. But what a job they did overall. Hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. Throwing is Brady on third down. Goes underneath here to White. 23 yards on the play. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. A give. This is Michelle. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. On second down, here's Brady. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and he's got him complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! 
They'll turn to Michelle as they go back to the ground. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. So an even first quarter on the scoreboard, but the threat of points on the horizon. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. EA Sports. It's in the game. Welcome back to Hard Rock Stadium here in Miami. Currently, the Patriots in control of the football as we resume action in quarter number two.
on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the patch three. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Goskowski's kick is good. And the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the... Just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. For the Miami Dolphins, Charles, you think back to last year. They stayed in it much of the season. Week 14, that shocker on the final play versus the Patriots kept their playoff hopes alive, but ultimately they didn't make the playoffs going to have a new head coach what do you think moving forward and what we all surprised after that win against the Patriots that they lost their last three games and as you noted cost Adam Gase his job this team has not won a playoff game since December 30th 2000 head coach Dave Wanstead quarterback Jay Fiedler wow. that's a long time ago They've got to find a way to correct that, and they'll be doing it with new administration up front, a new head coach, and maybe a new quarterback. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. On second down, it's Drake. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Lawrence Guy able to bring him down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he didn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Well, off topic, but we'd be remiss if we didn't point out what else was happening Super Bowl weekend. The Madden 19 Club Championship, second major this season, two more to follow. And our winner, Pauvin, representing the Oakland Raiders. He took down the Vikings and your favorite, Charles, I.B. Strafen. He had to reach for the I.B. Profen after a 38-24 <laughs> beatdown in the final. Well, you know if he was representing the Oakland Raiders, 
The Vikings went down, and they went down hard. That's how the Raiders do it. How about Pauvin, though, wins 100000 for his efforts, also won Super Bowl tickets for the next day, unselfishly gave them to his father and his brother. How about that? That's pretty cool. Congratulations, Pauvin. Way to go. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. On second down, Michelle. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against the run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. Now a play fake, Brady. Trying to lay one up deep. Oh, this is taken in, it's complete. And give him a gain of 37. The former seventh round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. Wait, 20! They go play action here on first down. He's going to walk one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. But well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, Brady, wide open, Gronkowski, and he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play, Brady to Gronkowski, 42 yards. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Wow, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. That throw by Brady incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line, Robert Quinn in there to get him for a loss of five. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground.
Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Shotgun now for Brady. This is caught. Gronkowski. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that will make it six to nothing. So another good job defensively because they've allowed three trips into the red zone, but only the two field goals. Yeah, that's the bend but don't break, isn't it? And they really didn't get broken at all because if you're running off the field having allowed of two field goals and three trips in the red zone, you've actually come out ahead. Yeah, flipping over to the other side, the offense, they'll hope to cash in for six next trip. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. While we have a second here, let's peek back to the Super Bowl. The lowest scoring Super Bowl, Charles, in history, 13 to three. And it took us 53 minutes to get our first touchdown of Super Bowl 53. Can you believe they went into the half Three to nothing, New England. Steven Goskowski with a field goal. Then they finally tie it up with Greg Zerline at the end of three quarters of the Rams knocking one through the post. The Patriots, the third team to win the year after losing the Super Bowl, the first since the Dolphins in 1972. And, of course, the big number now for New England, six titles, and they are tied with the Steelers for the most ever. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. On second down, here's Tannehill. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. the gun, Tannehill. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Patriots take over. 
Well, CD, the NFL held its awards show the night before the Super Bowl, and as you and I had speculated the last few weeks, Patrick Mahomes, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, and for the second straight season, how about Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year? Yeah, Donald was expected. We knew that was going to happen. Mahomes, we thought would happen. There was that school of thought that maybe Drew Brees might walk away with the MVP since he's never won one, but Mahomes, a deserving winner. How about the Offensive Rookie of the Year? Saquon Barkley with the Giants. Many thought it might be Baker Mayfield with Cleveland. Yeah, defensive rookie of the year, Darius Leonard of the Colts, and the Colts comeback player of the year, Andrew Luck, and very deservedly so. I would say that for sure, and he beat out J.J. Watt, who also would have been a deserving winner. Coach of the year, I thought, was a close vote, or probably should have been closer to me, because I thought Anthony Lynn from the Chargers deserved some respect, but Matt Nagy of the Bears, he ends up winning the award. They went 12-4 and in his rookie season. And then last one we need to mention, Chris Long of the Eagles. Eagles well-deserved Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. Congrats to all. Yeah, how about that? Donated his first four game checks to fund a literacy program that donated free books and mentoring services for families. And remember last season, he donated every game check to causes that he felt strongly about. From the 22, here's second and eight. Wait, 20, 380. On second down, here's Brady. And incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense, when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. I can put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep, Danny Amendola. Fielded just inside the 20. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. Before this next drive gets going, we need to discuss the Hall of Fame inductees. There will be eight in the 2019 class. We got Champ Bailey, Tony Gonzalez, Ty Law. Who, who else am I forgetting in there? Well, how about a big guy? A lineman, Kevin Mawai, who was absolutely terrific in his career. How about Ed Reed with the Baltimore Ravens and the great job he did in the secondary there? Pat Bowen. Gil Brandt as contributors, the owner of the Broncos and the longtime scout with the Cowboys. And I love the senior committee bringing in Johnny Robinson, the safety with Kansas City. Tony Gonzalez was a first ballot guy. And of course, when I hear Ty Law's name, you think, wow, he started this great Patriots dynasty that we're still living with. You're exactly right. And the Patriots, with all of their championships, probably underrepresented in the Hall of Fame. Now, before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The throw on second down is Tannehill. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. On first down, Drake. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report.
Welcome back to Hard Rock Stadium here in Miami. We're in the first quarter of play, and it's the Patriots in control of the football. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, it's Brady. And able to find Dorsett. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 big yards on that one. And a New England first down. This is James White, and he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. This is Sony Michelle. He grew up a few miles north of here. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. There was only one man who scored a touchdown in Super Bowl 53, and of course it was that man we just saw, Sony Michelle. How about him turning it on in the postseason of his rookie year? Because in the 16-game regular season, he didn't play in all 16 now. He did have six touchdowns, which is pretty darn good but he added six more touchdown runs in the Patriots' three playoff wins. That's pretty significant as well. To throw is Brady. And a first hookup with his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. For Gronk, of course, the big question, has he played his last game in the NFL? But we won't have to wait too long to find out if he sticks with what he told everyone after the ball game. Expects to make a decision in about a week or so. We'll find out if indeed that was his last game. Not only did he go out a winner and on top, how about six catches for 87 yards? And don't forget that huge 29-yarder to set up the Patriots' only touchdown. And speaking of the number 29, that's his age. He'll turn 30 in May. On first and 10, here's Brady. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. 
nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? They were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. The Patriots into the red zone for the first time. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this Foster afternoon. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! No! Shotgun now for Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's caught. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Again, they'll throw with Brady. This is caught. Gronkowski. Brady to Gronkowski. They make it look easy, don't they? And it's a Patriot first down. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it. Make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Brady now on third and goal. There's a man, and it's Edelman for the Patriot touchdown. Julian Edelman, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Goskowski with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Koskowski now out to kick it away. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. For the Miami Dolphins, Charles, you think back to last year. They stayed in it much of the season. That shocker on the final play versus the Patriots kept their playoff hopes alive, but ultimately they didn't make the playoffs. Going to have a new head coach. What do you think moving forward? And weren't we all surprised after that win against the Patriots that they lost their last three games and, as you noted, cost Adam Gase his job? This team has not won a playoff game since December 30th, 2000. Head coach, Dave Wanstead, quarterback, Jay Fiedler. Wow. That's a long time ago. They've got to find a way to correct that, and they'll be doing it with new administration up front, a new head coach, and maybe a new quarterback. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Cut. 30. Cut. Now on first down, Drake again. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. To throw on second down is Tannehill. It's complete. It's gone. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter down. 7 nothing is our score. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. Welcome back in, everyone, to EA Sports coverage of the NFL. It's the Dolphins in control of the football as we get back to the action in the first quarter. Second down, here's Tannehill. And that 
will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. Seven nothing is our score. They'll need to convert a third and seven, though, to start things out. Shotgun snap for Tannehill. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up fourth. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Well, CD, the NFL held its awards show the night before the Super Bowl, and as you and I had speculated the last few weeks, Patrick Mahomes, MVP Offensive Player of the Year, and for the second straight season, how about Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year? Yeah, Donald was expected. We knew that was going to happen. Mahomes, we thought would happen. There was that school of thought that maybe Drew Brees might walk away with the MVP since he's never won one, but Mahomes a deserving winner. How about the Offensive Rookie of the Year? Saquon Barkley with the Giants. Many thought it might be Baker Mayfield with Cleveland. Yeah, defensive rookie of the year, Darius Leonard of the Colts, and the Colts' comeback player of the year, Andrew Luck, and very deservedly so. I would say that for sure, and he beat out J.J. Watt, who also would have been a deserving winner. Coach of the year, I thought, was a close vote, or probably should have been closer to me, because I thought Anthony Lynn from the Chargers deserved some respect, but Matt Nagy of the Bears, he ends up winning the award. They went 12-4 and in his rookie season. And then last one we need to mention, Chris Long of the Eagles. Those well deserved Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. Congrats to all. Yeah, how about that? Donated his first four game checks to fund a literacy program that donated free books and mentoring services for families. And remember last season, he donated every game check to causes that he felt strongly about. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing on first down is Brady. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Brady again here on second and 10. Slant route caught by Edelman. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. Edelman, the seventh wide receiver to be named Super Bowl MVP. Ten catches, 141 yards in that game, Charles. And just think, if Julian Edelman had followed his heart initially, he would have gone to Canada to play quarterback, which is what he played at Kent State. But he wanted to play in the NFL, willing to make the change to receiver. And how well has that paid off for not just him, but the New England Patriots? Paid off really well, and he can hide that Super Bowl MVP trophy right in that beard. <laughs> Brady, 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. On the handoff, it's Michelle. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Bobby McCain here, the one who brings him down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Three 
Now Brady throwing on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Shotgun now for Brady. And that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep, Danny Amendola. For the Miami Dolphins, Charles, you think back to last year. They stayed in it much of the season. Week 14, that shocker on the final play versus the Patriots kept their playoff hopes alive, but ultimately they didn't make the playoffs. Going to have a new head coach. What do you think moving forward? And weren't we all surprised after that win against the Patriots that they lost their last three games and, as you noted, cost Adam Gase his job? This team has not won a playoff game since December 30th, 2000. Head coach, Dave Wanstead, quarterback, Jay Fiedler. Wow. That's a long time ago. They've got to find a way to correct that, and they'll be doing it with new administration up front, a new head coach, and maybe a new quarterback. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now on second down, this is Gore. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. Partner, we're into the second quarter, and I guess you can kind of look at it both ways. The offense, they've got to figure out what they're going to do because they haven't scored any points. But if you're the defense, you're feeling great about what you've got going on. The only concern you have, if you get to the half, what adjustments will the offense make to try to defeat you? Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he slides to avoid the hit. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime previews. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad-libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm Brandon Gaudet.